Hey guys, welcome back to the Exam Vision YouTube channel. My name is Ellen and today I'm going to be talking about the dreaded how to get a H1 in higher level maths, obviously higher level, in the Leaving Cert. All of these tips will kind of correspond to junior certs as well, so if you want to improve your junior cycle maths, then these will also help. I do want to start off by saying that throughout all of fifth year, up until the very end of fifth year, I was not doing well in maths. Um, I was getting like 40, 50%, I was not doing great. But in my Leaving Cert in May of sixth year, I got a H1. I sat the leaving cert in 2021, so I had predicted grades and I also had the exam and then I got the whatever grade I got best in, I got that grade. And I do want to say that I did get my H1 in the written exam myself, my teacher predicted me a H2. So I did get the H1 all on my own in the exam, it was in my predicted grade, just want to point that out there. So. I swear to God, I really can help because I went from 50s at the very end of fifth year up to a H1. So I promise I can definitely help and if you're in a similar situation in fifth or sixth year right now, I hope these tips can help you out. The first thing I'm going to be talking about is to trust the process. When you're doing all of these random topics like fifth year, sixth year, like you could be doing trigonometry in fifth year and then it comes to sixth year, you don't remember a thing, obviously. With the maths course, I feel like people don't talk about this enough, but the whole course really comes together in like April, May of sixth year. As in when you start to like finish the course off and finish all of the topics, you can see how all of the topics are actually like combined and like you work with many topics to figure out a question. They all start to combine and work together and you can use certain topics within certain topics and things like that and it makes things so much easier. So if you're in the middle of a topic in fifth or sixth year right now and you don't understand it and you're confused, I promise when it comes to April or May, it will all make sense. So do not stress too much right now. If you're in a particular topic and you don't really understand, it's not that big of a deal. It will come together at the end. It might not feel like it, especially for maths, you feel like you need to understand everything as you go along, but I promise at the end, April or May, you will understand where everything is coming from. So just trust the process, keep going, keep working through. I promise it will work out. The next thing I'm gonna be talking about, oh, exam questions. I know you know I'm gonna say that, but I cannot, I can't stress it enough. Every school is different. Some schools like work from a maths book. Uh, some schools don't. I personally didn't. Our school didn't use a maths book for higher level maths. Well, my teacher didn't anyway. I didn't even buy a maths book for fifth or sixth year. I didn't own a maths book. Never used it because honestly, they are the biggest waste of time. They are not exam focused and they need to be changed desperately. So if you have a maths book and you're working off like the exercises within that book, just stop like, even like, I know your teacher might give you work for homework, obviously you have to do that, but just know that everything in that maths book is nothing to do with the exam. And to be honest, it's really not helping you just doing exercises from the maths book. Exam questions are literally the only way to go. Some people do their exam questions like online and get all of their exam questions online, uh, which is fine. And like, if that works for you, that's great. For me personally, I would actually buy the exam papers, like the big chunky maths one, and I would do all of the questions. So when I sat down, let's say, to do some maths exam questions. So when I pick the question that I'm gonna do, I wouldn't actually like do out the question or do out the answer or whatever in the papers. I would just do it on a sheet of paper, like refill pad. And so if I got it wrong, I was able to go and correct myself and then I would write the correct solution in my exam paper, like in the actual exam paper. So then when it comes to the end of the year and you're going through exam questions, you have all of the answers written in already. And I know obviously you can get the answers online or at the back of the book or whatever, but I feel like it's really important to like, see how you did it. We all have different brains. We all think about things differently and like our logic is all very different. So I think if you have an answer that you wrote yourself, you can write in little notes and say where you got each part from and why you did each part. I feel like that's so much more useful than just looking at a solution online. Also with exam papers, like in the actual exam paper, like book, I would go through, I think I went through maybe four or five of them the entirety of sixth year. I would do all of the questions in them. I would have one specific exam paper with all of the right answers in it, but I would go through a whole nother exam papers, doing all the questions again, once it was full, that was it, get a new one, do them again and again and again. I know a lot of people say that maths isn't as repetitive in the Leaving Cert as let's say like biology or something like that, where the questions come up the exact same every year. Maths is really the exact same. And you will notice that as you keep doing exam questions. Like I would sit down every weekend and I would have a topic for that weekend in maths, let's say differentiation. And throughout the weekend, I would do every single differentiation question that was in the past 10 years in exam questions. And if you're 
doing that, you will notice that every question is pretty much the same, except like the function might be different. But really, they're very, very similar. And there might be a couple of hard ones and things like that, but it's good to do them. And if you're doing them repetitively, you're expecting something like that might come up in the exam. So if you're able to do like, let's say all of the differentiation questions, no problem. You know the little tactics they might do in the exam questions to like try mess you up. If you can expect all that and if you can know all that and can do them all correctly, you are so set for differentiation in the exam. It's also extremely important to do maths pretty much every single day. I know obviously you have what, six or seven other subjects that you need to focus on and I like, get that. But every single day, if you're really trying to improve your maths, you need to be putting like 20 minutes aside to just do an exam question, half an exam question, a short question, just something. Because you need to keep that maths knowledge up in your head. The minute you give, the minute you stop doing it for like a week, you're trying to rebuild that again, what you've just lost over the past week. So honestly, every single day you need to be doing an exam question, figuring it out, understanding the answer, and then boom, that's maths done for the night. But I would definitely recommend over the weekends, every couple of weekends, just focusing on maths and on a particular topic in maths. That's especially what really helped me. But the exam papers are the holy grail. You need to be doing the exact same questions over and over and over and over again. And I feel like that also helps like when you go into the exam, you're not gonna be so scared. You're gonna read the exam question and be like, whoa, that's really similar to one I did like two weeks ago. It makes it a lot less scary and it just really helps with confidence as well. Other than the exam papers, there is a lot of other great resources that you should be utilizing. For instance, like if there's an exam question that you see the answer online, but you actually don't know how they're doing it, you can type that into Google and most likely that they will have a video for it or some teacher of some sort has made a video on explaining how to do it. I find those extremely helpful just to help me understand because you don't wanna just memorize the answer, especially for maths, you need to understand where they're going in each section so that you're able to like do that again in the exam for yourself. Another great resource is Exam Vision's courses. They have a higher level maths course for leaving certs. It is amazing. It has like H1 standard notes, it has video lessons. So like if your teacher maybe isn't the greatest at maths because I know that can be the downfall of a lot of people. They have video lessons for every single topic. They have presentations, quizzes, and they also have exam questions like filtered by topic and their corresponding answer as well. So that will be super helpful to use if you're doing your exam questions. At least you're having the answer there as well. You can correct yourself would highly recommend. If I had exam revision courses, especially for maths, I definitely wouldn't have been failing up until the end of fifth year. So definitely check them out if you are interested because I genuinely think they would really help you out. The last thing I'm gonna be talking about is talking to your teacher and actually asking for help when you need it. In class, I feel like a lot of the time teachers will just assign you to do some exam questions or even like homework when you get exam questions to do. If you genuinely don't know how to do them, you can find solutions online. These solutions aren't helping you out. You don't really know where the answer's coming from. Please just talk to your teacher about it. That is their job. They want you to ask questions. You know, they know the user all sitting there with a million questions in your head, but you won't ask them. So if there's homework that you had no idea how to do, you got it completely wrong, completely twisted, just ask them. They will come over to you, they will help you, and they will explain it to you so you don't make those mistakes in the future. I really hope these tips helped you guys out. I promise that it is so possible to get a H1 in maths. I know it's so like, seems like such a hard thing to get and like, oh, it just seems so stigmatized or something. For, but coming from me when failing in fifth year, I promise it is so possible. If you want it bad enough, and if you work for it hard enough, it is so possible. Definitely go check out the exam vision maths course. It is amazing. Definitely might help you out. And I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye.